Actually, you want to mix it or whatever? My, uh, my sewing machine broke. My big one? Really? Yep, again. And, uh, because that's what it does. Is that the one that you were like, I fixed it? Dude. Yes, but I swear I have to fix that thing maybe once a month. And, uh, yesterday it started acting up. And, uh, I started acting up, man, and I was like, okay, okay anyways. started trying to fix it, couldn't fix it, couldn't figure it out, um, was like, if I could stop messing with it for that day, then I'll wake up tomorrow and work on it. Woke up today, basically did everything that I could do that wasn't related to that machine. I saw some closing and filling and stuff, did that, it's like, okay, and do, uh, three hours later, four hours later. Actually, right before I came here, I got it. Fucking got it. And I th the frustrating thing about it is I don't know what I did that fixed it. I tried all these different things, didn't work, didn't work, still broken. So I was like, well, fuck. I'm just going to strip it all down and do everything I know how to do. So I like, made sure the timing is right. Mm -hmm. I cleaned the entire assembly, lubricated the entire assembly. And like from that point, like every little thing that I know how to do is like just doing it all from scratch. Mm -hmm. And then it works. I did like five different things. I took apart the entire tension assembly, put it back together, like lubricated it, put it back together. Like everything I knew how to do, I did it all. So maybe it's just something was a little not tightened enough or something? No idea. I did something, but also cleaned it. I got on an air compressor, just made sure there weren't any like threads stuck somewhere, jammed it up. I that's good, it. because if you ever have to call the manufacturer, you can be like, oh, that's all ruled out. Something yeah, else. it's yeah. something else. Yeah, it's like when you call the internet people, they're like, did you reset it? Yeah, is it plugged in? This? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, oh. Yeah, I already tried it. Yeah. Work. Yeah, that was uh, fun. Not fun. It's fun when it's done. Mm -hmm. But getting there. But especially if you got a crunch and you're trying to get shit done. Uh, it gets stressful. Yeah. But I'm almost done. You know, TCL ordered a shitload of bags to start the season. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been hearing. Dude. So got the order and I'm like, okay, like, when do you want it? And the re response was as little soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, uh, can't do that. Like, <laughs> can't have it tomorrow, but I'll start working on it. And do um, you think it has to do because they got big sponsors now? Or they got big, you, you know, know, I think expectations. I think goal number one, yeah, expectations for sure. Um, but I think goal number one is to keep this, the, the shuttle stuff, at least for my stuff. Like, the, the big feedback I get from those guys is you don't keep the shuttle stuff. I'm like, well, it's because they, they sell, you know? And um, so I'm sure that the shelves will get stocked. I, my production's increased significantly. I've solved my like logistics issues, which is basically just order a shitload of stuff. So I've got tons of fabric and tons and tons of filler. Um, and, now, and I've got people to help, you know, a lot of people have asked like, hey, can I? Dude, this guy's always available. Do you ever want to come by the shop? He loves it. It's his thing. Gets up on it. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Brian Skotak has been clutch, mm -hmm. and then I've got a, a 13 year old girl who um, we have a, a nanny helps with our kid, mm -hmm. our youngest. It's her daughter, and bro. She's like number one employee. Flips bags, really? fills bags, like really so fast. She's just a hustler, man. She's fucking badass. Yeah, and uh, so she's and before that, does she know anything about Cornwall? No. She's still like, well, although she does, she's, she does like when the bag, like we'll get to the point where just there's so many bags yeah. and I'll see, she's just kind of standing there looking at them like I do. <laughs> you know, Sometimes at night I'll go downstairs, like I've got over 200 sets done yeah. down in my shop. And yeah, it's, it's just a lot of bags. Look at it, like, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I find, I figured out a way to get them lined up better. Mm -hmm. So I like just looking at all the sides. That are I saw all, that. Like, you did a good job up. on that, man. Yeah. I, yeah. And so now I figured out a little trick for like in production to, to get them lined up. Um, I got another trick in the design process. So now like I'm gonna be able to incorporate um, the more wraparound effects on two sided bags, two printable sides. Mm -hmm. Pretty excited about that. So like the the, the bandy clean bag I'm gonna drop. Um, that one I'm working on some some really cool wraparound things. Pretty excited about. What's the speed on the bandy clean? It's um, it is a pro sniper slash gambler 
uh, control side. Dude, bring him that, uh, bring him that, uh, the one that we just got done with the, uh, that custom one. Oh yeah, sorry. The oh, you, you saw it? Mm. Yeah, what'd you think about that? I think that he it nailed it. feels good, right? He nailed the colors. And that's a, that is a deadhead slash warden. Basically a Bonnie with right. a faster top. Right. Or a different right. top. I agree. Um, yeah. But I think that he nailed it on the design. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of want to reach out to him. I'm wondering what he's doing for printing because I thought those colors look good. Dude, with a, with a good black. He made it pop. Yeah. yeah. The colors are spot on and the, the black mm -hmm. was good. Yeah, he mm -hmm. did a good job. Zim. And it feels good. Like, it feels good in my hand. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think it's a... Dude, but last night we were playing, it was so... It was the most human I've ever played cornhole, man. I should bring like, some, some... I don't money. give a shit what bag you threw. It was stuck. No, Maybe got, we'll do a turn. I've got some bags that will Maybe slide. Maybe a turn. Yeah. We'll Even slide if it would condition. slide. It would slide one time. The next time, they slide again. Dude, it's... It uh, just, you couldn't push a bag. There's a hydrophobic material that's used in tents, and no, nothing stops it. It is... Really? It will go. Yeah. <laughs> that, that material that you, interesting. that material that you had on the top of the five uh, and yeah so that that should blow through any, any it should areas. but that, don't, that one I think it does absorb some moisture yeah. it's the that hydrophobic stuff doesn't absorb moisture at all we, so yeah. we tried putting bags in the freezer yeah we tried <laughs> we tried finding a dusty area on the ground and just freaking getting them real dusty and still same shit just what am I drinking it's uh, like a lime tequila, tortillas, chill. It's sweet. Yeah, it's chill. So it's supposed to be made to take as a shot. Oh. So what's it called, lime shot? Yeah, lime shot. Yeah. With natural, 100% uh, agave tequila with natural lime flavor. Is there sugar in here? Well, I mean, tequila's got sugar in it. Not as much as crown, but. Oh. Super you know, easy. You know yeah. they don't put that stuff on bottles. Yeah. They tell you how much alcohol is in it, and they say good luck. Dude, check this out. It's just 35%. Ah, okay, okay, okay. This guy named Oscar brought me this. It's from Guatemala. Guatemala. Yeah. I don't know. He says to mix it with Sprite. What do you think that is? Is that natural sugar, or what is that? I think it's just sediment from the manufacturing process. Yeah, probably whatever whatever fruit or flavoring is in there. Well, the way pina. Yeah. It can't be sugar. So, no, they've, they've, they've mixed it with something. Yeah. I can't read the little letters. So he says, I didn't even try it yet, but he's like, mix that with Sprite, nice. Dude, he's like, that's a fucking drink. I mean, this pina, yeah, I would guess it's, yeah, like pureed fruit, probably something like that. Yeah, fresh, fresh from, the, from the flavoring. So I guess. I'd, I'd be wary of that shit. <laughs> For sure. Uh, that's like headaches. Hey, I'm man. sure the, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you don't want to drink too much of it. I don't like to drink too much of anything sugary. This guy does. Look at this guy. He's got his Red Bull. Yep. That's a fucking Red Bull right there. Every time I see my dad drinking one of those, I'm like, oh, which one is that? And I throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets pissed. He's like, I was just sipping out of it. That's it. I was just going to, uh, yeah. I don't know. You get pissed too. It's $6. What? Yeah. What, um, who was over yesterday? I saw the Cavs. Uh, a bunch of D players. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for it's It's guys that, uh, that I, um, uh, was playing with before I even got into TCL. Oh, your buddies? Yeah, just buddies oh, cool. that, you know, we were just, we'd go to downtown Garland and just throw bags and like, you know, just fucking talk shit and, you know, stuff like that. And then now, since the leagues are over, they're like, oh, where do we play at? And I'm like, oh, let's play over here. They're so dedicated to playing that they're freaking playing in that sauna. Over there. Yeah. Dude, it was so fucking humid. Yeah, the, the rain is funny, it's like a hot rain, like a, Steam shower. It, when yeah. it when it was raining, oh, it was, it was cool. beautiful. It was nice and cool. Yeah. Oh, was it? Stop. As soon as it stopped raining, it was fuck you. <laughs> you could drag your finger across the board. Oh yeah. And you had water. Like there was water. Yeah. Humidity standing on the boards. It so was it was an air nice. contest all night, basically. Yeah. yeah. And there's this dude named Bam. Like literally, that's the name Bam, and he's he's got he was shooting fifty percent air mode last night. Yeah. And that's how he kept beating everybody. Pretty good. Yeah, and he throws his bag like it's a fucking tomahawk. Ugliest bag. Oh, like does he get like that? Like yeah. dirty diaper? Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. And it goes he, straight in, or lands right in front. He holds it like this, but when it comes out, it's it's like that. Yeah. He he kind of reminded me of uh, uh, your star, Big B, your Big B star. He likes to air melt, block, block air melt. Go oh, Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically the same shit. Yeah. It's either in the hole or it's right in front of the right. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I took him down though. So you took Bam Bam? I took him down. Yeah. I've noticed they're pretty good these days. He's, he was shooting pretty well yesterday. I was probably shooting about 75% airmail. And it's nice and flat too. Yeah. Or, or more, 75 to 80% airmail. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Hey, did you see that game with uh, with Matt Guy and uh, Mark Ricketts? Matt yeah. Guy versus Mark Rick? No. Yeah. For singles? It. I watched it. No. I think the reason Matt Guy lost is because he paid attention to the public. Instead of playing his game, he went ahead and started doing what they tell him he should do. If, some, if somebody throws a blocker in front of the hole, what does Matt Guy do? He Everything. Does, right? Yeah. Every time. But he kept doing it back block. Going behind? He kept trying to do it. And it would go a little right, a little to the left, mostly to the right. But, I mean, you're just, you're, 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 you're losing points immediately. Yeah. The the one where he gave up seven, um, Richards block, uh, put a block bag, and then he tried to block and went to the right. Yeah. And then he didn't follow up with an air mail. He tried to block again, mm-hmm. and it went to the left. And then mm-hmm. So, so he, that's he, Matt he Guy's so. weakness. He can't block. Mm-hmm. Or back block. He can't block at all, I guess. Yeah, that's he's just in the hole. That's, yeah. that's his game. Yeah, he's either straight in the hole or air mail. Or was that a yeah. championship? Yeah. That was a champ. That was to win it all. Well, yeah, we got there. Yeah. But what about the? Uh, what y'all think about the uh, smack talk of Jordan the Powers? <laughs> yeah, I think I liked it. I think you still got the title. You're good. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just saying. Dude, I, that was nothing. Like that. that was nothing. And I Mark couldn't even hear him. At all. I agree. Yeah, the other guy had headphones in, and he said it like. He let go of his bag, and he said it when his bag was in the air. It's not like he was yelling at him when he was throwing. He was rocking back when he said it. That bag didn't even leave his hand when when he was like, "That's yeah. confidence. That's muscle memory." Like, yeah, it's it, like, it, it's, oh, it's, I got this. It's surprising to me that like our, our TCL players are like, they're everyone's worked up over this. Like that is nothing. No. The, That's all nothing. the posts that are on Facebook are like that. Like I like uh, Miller Tom's uh, post where he's like. ACL could ha- hang with us in TCO like we, and then he started posting videos of TCO blaring music and is screaming. There, or something. Is there like Boston cornhole, and is there, is there other TCL before other regions like that? There are. Uh, I know there's a Michigan one, and I think there's a California one. I wonder if they're the same way. I don't know, but I, you know, I actually texted. Um, well, are we recording already? Mm-hmm. Well, I've got a, um, some ideas to kind of work with that. Uh, Fine. Yeah, you can send me a letter. Yeah, I'll read it. I'll, I'll send you a text later. <laughs> all my ideas. I know who fucking writes anymore. Nobody you know what people do? They take this and they transcribe it. You can get AI to transcribe your uh, blog, and then uh, now you have written content. God dang, son. Yeah. Please. You just you just know all kinds of little tidbits and stuff. Well, the rule is like if you're gonna create content, try to create as much as you can. Right, so you can turn this into a podcast. You can create a, a blog with it. You can do all kinds of stuff. Okay. Have you looked at podcast hosting? It's three bucks a month called Bean Sprout. Mm-hmm. Put it there. It does some things, and then you'll, you're listed with everybody. So you can Bean Sprout. Yeah. But but that's only audio though, isn't it? Just audio. Yeah. yeah. But some people like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, most of my first uh, episodes were just terrible audio. Dude, the, the time I had Jason Andrews on, I freaking... I stopped watching it. God damn thing fucking wasn't connected. The audio was bad. It fucking sucked. <laughs> and, then, and then Jason's already the type of guy who's like, he's already, yeah, man, it's not loud. Yeah, yeah exactly. He doesn't talk loud at all. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, damn, I just did him an injustice. But he's, he's got to come back. Yeah, got to yeah. redo it. Got to redo it. Yeah. You know? Especially once TCO starts going, be like, hey, how did it go, man? Did it go the way you think? you thought like these little tear bumps and stuff yeah uh, there's so many bees now there's so many there's over 700 bees is that what's going on there's 700 over 700 are you an eight player no i'm a my ppr is only like 8.1 or something like that so what's I'm, an eight player nine no eight player's got to be eight point eight point eight four eight point three eight point yeah. three so i didn't i don't i didn't make it based on ppr i was told that um above eight you can still get, there's a possibility that you're bumped to an A player based on like your style of play, like it's still a bit of an eye test. Mm. So you can have like an eight, like me, I'm an eight point one, I think, 
um, I can still be bumped to an A if I played like a high DPR game or something like that, like a dirty board game. But generally, um, it's eight point whatever it is, four or five. You're automatically in. Eight point, eight point three. But they're basing it off of, so they're basing it off just your TCL events from last year. So whenever um, Sportolio came uh, to state last year, it's one of the one of the platforms that they made specifically for TCL. Uh, but us as normal TCL players, we can't give you our TCL. Yeah. PPR. I actually mine's pretty low because I, I stink at the big tournaments. I, I don't play very well. So the basically the the main the the bumps came out because I came back out as a C, but I was told that I was going to be bumped to a B because I made right big start. So um, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of people called me. I mean, you should be a B because you have a PPR of seven for sure. Yeah, for my, sure. my PPR is a uh, seven point nine three. Yeah. 7.9? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, but you know what? That makes me feel good. Did you see the doubles match? Which Mark, doubles? Mark Richards and uh, the ACO? Well, I watched a, I watched a, a bit of it just to catch the, what people were yeah. talking about. The Because they were up 20 to 2. To 2, yeah. That's amazing. That, never that makes me feel more. better as a cornhole player that like that can happen to anybody. Yeah, you're never out of it. That's right? the best player in the world. And they kind of choked. Like, they uh, did choke. Yeah. Have you seen the, have you seen the memes already? They put the, the New England Atlanta meme on. Yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, the 28 to 3 meme. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, think about if there was, isn't there Betty in Vegas? Yeah. Nobody put that as a line? Like, okay, it's 20 to 2. What are the chances of him coming back? Who wants to make the bet? Yeah, who knows? I guess they didn't have that line yet. But whoever fucking would put a dollar on that, I mean, they would have made some fucking money. Because I bet you the odds were like, Ridiculous because I mean that guy is the best player in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Is he still? Yeah. Yeah, he's the yeah, number one player. Okay. Because he won the singles. Oh, singles. He beat. He, won. he beat the number two player before he won singles. Got it. So he won uh, first in uh, was it mixed doubles, singles, and second in doubles. Yeah. And then uh, he basically uh, won everything. He, he won his one doubles again. He won like twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars that weekend. 27.5 because then the conversation started coming into I think I talked a little bit of it last night because there was, uh, the guys were talking about how um, you, you, you can't just play cornhole and support yourself playing cornhole as a pro Yeah. but like they they released some public numbers for some of the cornhole players and I don't know exact figures but um, like Matt Guy with, without his sponsorships made over eighty thousand dollars in earnings from ACL this year and there's still tournaments. Yeah. To be played that, that you that those I guess invite only tournaments that they get towards yeah. the end of the year. The shootouts? Yeah. And then uh, and then that's not including his sponsorship. So he has a uh, I can't remember which one it was but one of his uh, sponsorships was public and it was ninety thousand dollars just for his sponsorship. Does he still work? Yeah. That's the big question I have. Like, that guy? Yeah. Yeah. Does he still have a regular job? Yeah. I think he works for like a, I think it's a plumbing company or a moving company, something like that, where like he loads, he like loads trucks up and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So my rule, if, if you're, like it's just textbook definition, right? If, if your primary source of income is cornhole, I think you should be able to call yourself a cornhole pro. If yeah. you have a job, if you have to like supplement your cornhole playing with either parents or a job or whatever, I think you can call yourself a pro. The ACL, the ACO, they might call you a pro. But that's just uh, marketing. You know? It's almost a scam, to be honest. I think that the whole labeling people of pros, I mean, think about what they just had, that uh, become a pro tournament gauntlet thing. Dude, they had so many people fly all the way to Carolina, pay, pay a register pay. or pay a big fee. Mm -hmm. You know, stay a couple nights. Mm -hmm. The people uh, who win, who got the bid, the money they spent goes towards their uh, pro fees, which is what, $120? Because mm -hmm. they have to pay $1,000 to become a pro. I guess that prepays for their events yeah. or whatever? Yeah. So, just their, so, so their entry fee for that gauntlet that went down, it goes towards that. Yeah. And all the rest of the money, I guess ACO keeps it. It's just, it's a cash cow. Yeah. Become a pro cash cow. 120 times 820? Yeah, I was doing the math, so um, you can you can cut this part out. But 
as a, as a pro, once you become pro ACL, in TCL, the not a pro league, when they charge pros $650, that's yeah. their entry fees for all SIGs, right? But if you do the math, just quick math, they're, a little, they're overpaying a little bit, so where's the extra? Yeah. I think it's just a, I mean, let's be honest, it's a discouraging thing. Like, yeah. you want to it's a pro, discouraging thing. Okay, you got to pay more. It's a tax. It's, it's a not a pro league, so, I mean, there shouldn't be a pro ranking in TCO, to be honest. Even if they're ACO pro, they're just an A. Or they can't play. Or they can't play. Well, I mean, they're not ranked pro as TCO because it's not a pro league. You know what I mean? So they can play as an A. The mm -hmm. top tier ranking as, as a TCO. Yeah, I hear TCO your argument, but I don't know. I don't know. I think it does need to be like a, but, a level above A if you're going to call yourself a professional. Well, I think maybe the the, the PPR rankings need to change, and I talked about this to uh, to CJ. There needs to be another level in there, kind of like ACO, like an intermediate level, and then we need, we need to expand the the um, what an A looks like, what a B looks like a little bit more, because there's 700 Bs because a, a what is it a 7.1 PPR is not not that hard with uh, just I mean the the everyday player that practices not every day, you know, mm -hmm. a couple times a week. How many or times plays you practice a day now? I don't practice. I, you be, you're too busy making bags. Yeah, and I kind of lost the passion, you know. Mm -hmm. like, or you know, have, are you, are you acquired a, a different passion now? You have more passion no, in, the I art, still, in the art form of making bags. Yeah, you know the... It's funny you mentioned art. Like the, I'm trying to learn a lot more about like graphic design and, and be better at, at designing. That's piquing your interest more than learning how to fucking shoot a block or an air metal. Yeah, the throwing yeah. bags is. I got. I'm a little bit burned out. Um, I, I did make an effort to try to get. Well, I'm probably still in the middle of that effort of trying to like level up. You're just not taking it that seriously as you used to. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Because there's only so many hours in a day. There's only so many hours in a day, right? That's right. exactly right. So. Right. Now, when I do practice, when I do decide to compete, I'm taking it more seriously, if that makes sense. Before, I used to like, not every day, but four days a week probably, mm -hmm. go out my driveway and throw bags, because I like it. it. It's like, hey everybody, leave me alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm in the driveway, you know, I got, maybe I have my headphones in or I'm listening to music, but I'm just gonna take a break for maybe an hour, walk mm -hmm. around, get some sunshine, and throw some bags. You never have neighbors like, hey, hey, what are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I, but I they, play cornhole too. But they've stopped. Yeah? Yeah. Can you whoop their ass? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they stopped coming, coming over. But people will walk by and comment. But now, oh, you got to come over soon. It's almost done, dude. Big D headquarters is almost finished. Um, hey, look at that. Kevin's over there throwing bags. Nice. <laughs> oh, I see him. He's gotten better, too, man. He's been fucking sprinkler in the fucking bags. And a year lately, he's been, like, at least getting on board. Yeah. So what? You got a Big D store? Uh, no, headquarters. We've well, been headquarters. to the house, right? Yeah. So where that driveway is, I built a wall or a fence. Mm -hmm. um, so now I've got a whole section. So you can't see your garage door now? Not anymore. Okay. Because if it, there's a wall there from where, where the, basically the front door is, just goes straight across. Mm -hmm. It's a big, big wall. It's got doors for cars if I want to bring them in. But now that, that section is sectioned off. Um, and there's a pool, which is almost done. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to make put a little patio out there. Um, so I can open up the garage door. There's the shop. Uh, boards. It, there's not for two lanes. I'm nice. just. I could not be more excited about it. Dude, I'm excited about it. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Any kind of cornhole environment like that, I'm fucking. It's gonna be great. It's not gonna be Airmail City, but it's gonna be, you know, my little piece of Texas. That's that's pretty cool. Damn right. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um. Yeah. So yeah, the other thing is the heat, dude. Like, so my practice is outside, and um, <clears throat> it's no fun. It's hot. No. no. That's why I wish I had AC in the dojo over there, man, but I don't. Not yet. No. Do you think it's ever a possibility? Oh, it's it's a must. <laughs> yeah. It's an absolute must. Great. That's it's good gonna, news. It's gonna fucking be a great, great practice spot. Yeah. Because you get burnt out. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking go out there and throw bags for an hour or something like that. And then after 20 minutes, you're like, wow. Yeah, this sucks. You, you, just, re you just feel yourself sucking more. Like, yeah. I'm not getting better. Like, Sweating all over the bags, right? Yeah, That's what I do. Just, yeah. Yeah. Go pick them up, and I'm dripping sweat on the board, and I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. 
So we were playing doubles last night. I started my car. We threw our bag and we jumped in the car in the AC. <laughs> they threw <it> back. <laughs> That's a good way to get sick, right? Yeah, back and forth. Yeah, yeah. cold. Mm-hmm. That was good. That was funny. Though. What do you think about old Grant and Sammy winning, man? That was they awesome. Have, dude, how many people did they go through? A lot. They were undefeated, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they smoked everybody. And I watched you know as many games as I could, and I was able to get the finals on the big TV. Um, and I was yelling and screaming at the TV. It was great. I, I really enjoyed watching them go win it. Dude, and that's, you know what? I think that, because Matt Longoria came out with those uh, not a pro shows. Yeah. And they look great. I love the way they yeah. look. But what happened there justified that shirt. Totally. I would, like, it has meaning now. Yeah. They, they talked a lot about it on the broadcast, the, the shirt. Oh, did they? Yeah, they did. They were bringing up the shirt. Uh, quite a bit, and then um, yeah. uh, after the after the the semifinal round, I believe they were talking to. Uh, I heard Kevin Mason in the background talking to one of the one of the guys that was on broadcast and um, asking if Grant was going to be qualifying again. Yeah, and because he was wearing the not a pro shirt. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was a, a kind of a uh, I don't know. Like Sammy wanted to wear that shirt because he couldn't qualify. Love it. Found out he couldn't qualify. But I really wanted him to to back that up with a singles win. I think that would have been just yeah. I wonder what bags he threw in. Uh, there are those singles. singles. Oh, Sammy like singles. singles? And singles yeah. he threw deltas. He threw mm-hmm. deltas. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Man. He's been a. What's the speed on the rejects? I don't know. Either. I don't know very much about it. It's, it's, got that weird, it's got that weird carpet. Does it? But it's printed. Both sides of that bag are printed. Yeah, but it has that. Hey, did you see the? Uh, did you see the? Uh, the seven twenty four bags? They're yeah, right there? that's an interesting carpet. It is. I think I know what it's it supposed is. Supposedly it's a four. Yeah, it's supposed it, to be. I, I threw it on the board. And I saw it move, and I I think I know what it is, but I don't know for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've got a couple prototypes of the material that. Is what I think it is, and I, I really love it. As red. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Hey, what's this right here? Is this a dog bone? No, that is a. You can measure if bags are legal or illegal. Oh. And there's lots. Oh yeah, so we can talk about that, right? How so about did you ACL? You, you made this yourself? No, I got that prototype. Oh, this is tight. Like a rapid prototype machine. It's, it's even got your logo on it and everything. Yeah. Is this like one of those uh, 3D printers? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, I got two of them. You got a. 3D printer? No, no, I don't have a 3D printer. Oh. No, I source that. But I reach out to somebody who does. Because trust me, I've had a 3D printer. <laughs> but it's just another thing that I would just spend all day about. You know what I mean? And yeah. you can just get it done. Um, Dude, this is cool. You can outsource that kind of stuff pretty fast. Yeah. So this is the, the 5.75 is the minimum. Yeah, it's super easy to use. So let's take a legal bag, which would be uh, three on the And, um, so the high part, right? So bags have limitations on this is as big as it can be, and this is a, as uh, skinny or flat as it can be. This is as short as it can be. Let me get the. Let me get your shot here. Oh. Right here. <coughs> All right. So it's pretty simple. Um, you have your height. So there's four dimensions. Well, there's more than four, but this thing measures four. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got your maximum thickness of a bag. Mm-hmm. That's what this is measuring. Your mac- your minimum width of a bag. This is maximum width and minimum thickness. Right. So it's possible this tool would not work on a maximum uh, width and a maximum uh, height. But right. nobody makes that bag. Right. right. That's ridiculous. Um, so here we got a uh, Taylor Stone bag. Sexy bag. Totally yep. legal. Right. Mm-hmm. You don't see any gaps on the small side. Okay. And it's also um, not too thick. There's space uh, here. So it's a bigger bag, but it's not an illegally thick bag. Right. You know, so it, and the, to- a, the tolerance is 5.75 to 6.25, right? Yeah, you can have a, a bag that's 5.75 inches um, across. That's cool. That's the smallest bag. So you had a wizard? Yeah. That's a good yeah, example good. of, um, it's legal. These are usually pretty small bags. Yeah, but it's just barely. Uh, this is a good example of this is a used one, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you gotta smash it down, you know, give it a chance to win. Yeah. Make sure that it's. It's a sexy bag too. Yeah, and so this is the minimum size, and you can see it, it kisses the sides. So this nice. is a. 
just barely, they did a really good job of making sure their bags are legal. Although when it's new, mm -hmm. if you have a brand new one, it might not pass the test. And it's supposed to pass the test when it's new. Oh, okay. So this would probably be a little bit smaller then. Probably. If it was brand new. Yeah. But okay, it's so. not that much smaller. They don't open up that much when they break in, surprisingly. That is a sexy bag. They have me the game changer. Oh, yeah. Game changer. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Here, let's take three bags. Let's get these. Nope. I'm not measuring any of those. Oh, they're the game changer. No? Shit. No, fuck that. I don't want to. I don't want to stir controversy. These are some <laughs> sexy bags right here, man. Yeah. All right. Um, so game changers are interesting because look, they're like almost minimum thick thinness. They're almost illegally thin, but they're not. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's just, that's the minimum like thickness, right? Mm -hmm. And the game changer, you know, there's room, but you can see it's almost a minimum thickness bag. So did you hear the rumor that maybe uh, TCL was going to bring back the game changer? Are they really? It's a rumor. Uh -huh. I don't know, but not not this year, but maybe next year. You can see like this one is way thicker mm -hmm. um, than, uh, or not thicker, but it's definitely 575. Okay. It's not too too thick. There's plenty of room over here, like half inch. So it's probably like a six inch wide bag and mm -hmm. it's not but, too thin. But here's my question. So if they did bring back, let, let's say they made a deal with all cornhole, because that's who makes them, uh, to bring back the TCL Game Changer, they couldn't call it the Game Changer anymore, right? Because you can't have, you can't have, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Trademark infringement? No, you can't have uh, double, what do you call it? Double stamp bags or? Oh, the ACL rules? That's up to the ACL, man. It's you, can't, you can't have co-branded bags. It's all contracts and that's up to So, so basically, if, yeah, I know. The guesstimation, if all corner was like, you know what, Chad, Jason, we're going to sell y'all TCL game, we're going to sell y'all game changers again. You can't call them game changers because ACL or yeah. they already call them game changers. Yeah. So what would be the name? Oh, um, what do you think they call it? What do I think they call it? I think they got good. all slides, game changer. What are the bags they have? I think that I mean they could either go old school and be like call it the come and take it. Well, that's already that's already existed. Yeah, but I don't know. No, I'm saying because they'd have to change the name. Yeah. And they're like, hey, what, this is our name. Just come and take it. Because that's what they first came out with. They call it Patch. Oh, man. <laughs> patch. Um, put patch on the back. How do you say Game patch. Changer in Spanish? And then, I, oh, like, I like it. Yeah, how do you say that? I don't know. Fuego uh, Cambiado? No, Cambiador de Fuego. Oh, dude, yeah. Yes, that's kind of long, though. It's kind of like some of those Mexican people that got like, first name and like three middle names and then the last name that's crazy yeah and they're all super long like water look big they're not short well, they yeah. start like, like mine, the mine is short i just got nevis marcus jr that's just three but my first name is just like what say it again nevis <laughs> nevis and it's like uh, that's why i rather just go by cj make it easy Kind of like what you do with your last name. Oh, speaking of, this is your jersey. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, the schnitzel pop. Let's this go. Oh, schnitzel pop. Yeah. I love it, dude. So it's schnitzel oh, pop. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. There he is, man. Wow. That's super cool, dude. Thanks. <laughs> love it. So, yeah, I think it's a, what is it, XL? Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Thanks, man. So, there you go, man. Can't wait. Can't have too many jerseys. I wear this thing. That's all I wear these days. Just four on jerseys. I got some. I got some funny jerseys coming. Yeah. My debut on the he's, one. I think probably the best idea you've had is that he's coming out with a jersey that's um, kind of based on non-sponsored. I'm a non-sponsored player. I love it. Seeking sponsorships. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. And so kind of like a billboard says like you could be advertising here or advertising works, right? Love it. He's gonna have a bunch of rectangles on the back. That's empty or where saying, hey, you could be here. Like, for Love it. That's yeah. a good idea. And, yeah. you know, this shit's expensive. Have a brother out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Yeah. I like it. We'll yeah. see if it's it works uh, for you, man. Uh, not affiliated. Not affiliated. Hey, yeah. is it not or non? Not. Not affiliated. Not affiliated. Yeah, because, I mean, you can go you can go either way, but I went with not affiliated. And then, you know, on the back of the jerseys, uh, the sponsor player just says sponsor player. Not sponsored yet. 
mm. on the back, on the bottom of the jersey. Yeah, I made a huge mistake uh, announcing. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start sponsoring people. Like, let me know. That oh, was shit. that was dumb. Just blow up. Oh, you talking about when you're, Oh yeah, that post you made. Oh yeah. That was a huge mistake. How many requests do you get? You can have hundreds. Yeah, of course. You gotta be you, you. You gotta be like one of those agents that just show up, like a scout that shows up at a, at, a at Garland High School or at fucking UT. They don't even know you're the guy. You're just watching. You guys. I, I I made a huge mistake. But you gotta you know be like that man. You know the coolest thing. I don't know if you've noticed. I don't know Buffalo if you, boys you've probably noticed. Though. You've probably noticed your hats, shirts, jerseys, bags have really showed up at tournaments now because they're seeking that. That you know what I mean? Hey. So, or tag? Yeah, but that yeah, wasn't they, the purpose. I know, but I'm just saying that's it. It really. But now I've got all these people I'm gonna let down. Now they get mad at me and have a reason to not like me, you know? Because I didn't mm-hmm. like, I didn't sponsor them or whatever. Right. So you know that what? was a huge mistake. If they if they got a brain in their head, they know that. You gotta have like you gotta be a badass player, man. You can't be you can't be sponsoring people that are like, you know, throwing fours. Right. And yeah, I'm trying to come up with like different levels. And the other thing I'm trying to do is work with TCL. So, you know, I've asked Chad and Jason like, what can I tell the public about back policy, right? And they still have not given me anything. And I'm like, look, dude, I'm asking specifically for for like what your statement wants to be. Like, I don't want to frame it in my terms. Because you might not like how I explain it to people, you know? But um, what I will say is that it's not cheap. I can't just hand out bags, right? I've got to pay to hand out bags, and it's a lot of money. It's, it, so even for, like, if I wanted to set up a sponsored player with two sets of, like, three bags or four bags, that's eight sets. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I won't say exactly how much it's going to take out of my pocket, mm-hmm. but it's significant. Like of we can all go to a steak dinner, order bottles of wine, and eat instead of doing that. Of you know what I mean? It's a uh, pricey, yeah. so it's just not like economically feasible to have a bunch of uh, quote sponsored players that get free bags. No. So well, free TCL bags, mm-hmm. right? Those things are expensive, yeah. um, and they're expensive for a bag maker. That's why if you're gonna invest in somebody, you gotta be like, dude, this motherfucker's good. Right. So well, yeah. I've got so the two, I would say like the top players. Um, you want to guess? The one's a no-brainer. Well, the top players I saw a big, a big switch to, to Kevin Mesa went to. You talking about the top players? Throwing, TCL started throwing your stuff. Well, yeah, you grand up church and Sammy. Yeah, no, I mean that. Well, uh, actually, throw my bags. Yeah. Mesa, oh, that's Mesa that's switched over your. Well, bags. I'm telling you, dude. Oscar so is your. Oscar's the man, for he, sure. He's how do you say his last name? Marina. 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 Or I'd have to read it again. I have to see it. The, 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 it's, I, I think it's M A I R E N A. So that's why I think it's like Marina. Marina. Marina? 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 Sound like a Marine? I don't know. I, you know I've asked him, and I, every time I talk to him at the six series, I'm always wasted. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> hey, you know what would be interesting is like, when you get, if you know you're going to have one of those nights where you're like, you know what? I've had a bad fucking day at work, but tonight I got fucking sick. I'm gonna have a good old time, blah blah blah. But you know what? I'm gonna record. I'm, it's kind of like a GoPro. Yeah. It just were like the next day where you're like, all right, I don't remember this. I don't remember. <laughs> you have a GoPro. Yeah, just like that's what those snap glasses are that's, for. He, yeah, he needs. You go play back chest, what you fucking said. Chest mounted GoPro. <laughs> like, that's funny. I have a lot of GoPros, dude. I've got needs, like ten GoPros. He needs one. People tell you, hey, you fucking said this and that, dude. That was fucking hilarious. Like, I, I did. Yeah, I, you know, I also, you know I, how he's sitting there behind the board like this? He yeah. just needs to have one on his head. It's a good idea. Just sitting there. No, but you know what? I think the key to catching a sexy angle, and I'll take it. And, and it, I, the proof is, I, one time I didn't make it to one of my uh, daughter's jujitsu uh, okay. tournaments, and my wife was in charge of taking the angles, right? And and so she she started it on on my daughter and then, and the other girl facing each other and like, oh, perfect, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, they just go off camera. And then she catches up, and it's oh, over. No. It's fucking over. Oh, no. Like, it's already pinned, and, and I was like, what the fuck happened? And so what happens when that when that usually goes down is because you you're got the camera, it. and yeah. you're watching it. Yeah. You have to look at what you're watching through the camera. Yeah. You can't take your eyes off the camera, no matter what, like, 
you want to watch that? Watch it with your camera. Right. And I think that's what my wife was doing. She was like, oh shit. Yeah. I think that would be a pretty cool episode, though, like a SIG episode in, in the eyes of Sister yeah. Sexy Bags or in the Well, eyes. I can try to bring some GoPros. Well, I'll have them if I fly. Freaking here. GoPro or chest mounted <laughs> GoPro, and you're just like, that's all you're doing. All. You're playing. You yeah, have you a chest mounted GoPro. The thing about GoPros is battery management. You know, yeah. they, they run for about an hour, two tops. Yeah. And uh, that's the, the tough thing is to keep the batteries coming and charged. Uh, I've got, I've got a setup, so maybe we can. Are you gonna be at uh, Shreveport? Yeah. All right. Well, let me know. I'll, Lord willing. What have you ever looked into one of those um, handheld gimbals? I, I, I definitely tell you about it all the time. Yeah, I would I go with DJ, DJI. Is it's expensive, but those guys are masters of audio control. I, I was telling him when we were coming back from Top Sixty, I said I think there's a Best Buy on the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, think, you know, you know, yeah. people say that if I ever win the lottery, I'll do this, I'll buy that. Yeah. First thing I would fucking do for one lottery is hire I'd hire a fucking top of the line, fucking badass videographer. Yeah. Assistant. Uh, assistant? Assistant. You have a fucking um, business, bro. Yeah. What do you mean? Hire one now. No. No, but I'm talking about a real assistant where like a real assistant. You just fucking do whatever. Like like just write down like, oh my you told me that like five times I didn't keep forgetting. Times. I, and I told and you I, why. I'll write it on a piece of paper, and maybe I'll lose a piece of paper. Oh, wait, are you an Apple? Yeah. Dude, Granite Church turned me on to Notes. The Notes, Notes app is surprisingly powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you can do so much. Try it. it so, you can share with people. You can uh, collaborate, and everybody can, can get the same list. It's so it, it, it's a good app. If you shared it between the three of us, I can type it, and you can see it in real time. If you get a little ba -ding, if I shared it, there was an uh, edit made, you know, every yeah. time you get like notification. See, but, but right now I, I would have to type that in because I don't want to forget, and I have to ignore y'all real quick. <laughs> so with an assistant, I'd be like, write that down, put, put it in your notes. I right? think you someone telling you at all times. <laughs> wait, wait, but that's what I'm saying. It's got to be somebody who's like. There's a, you need three shifts. You you have a good time with them too. <laughs> like you're gonna wake up, like oh yeah, I just had this dream. This is me right there. <laughs> no, at nighttime it'll be it'll be just a, it'll be yourself because it's just you. You just put it in there, but you just know, get a random phone call at night. Yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. got to be somebody that's like you know you have a good time with them too. You know, hey. That's true. Yeah. But they don't like, drink because they have to take down the notes. No. They gotta be legible. Yeah, they gotta be, like, they should be working somewhere else Maybe. instead of doing this. Kind no, of. it's has you can speak and it'll translate it in there. For yeah, you. it's it's a good app. Look into it. Really, it did help me out. I use it at work. Hey, uh, remind me about notes tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll watch this. I've always used it at work. Hey Siri, take a note. <laughs> what? What do you want it to say? CJ needs to buy a gimbal. Tomorrow, you just look at your notes and you realize you made that note. To remind yeah. you, yeah, you check your notes. notes every day. Check your notes, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You can set alerts on notes too that where it, where it, where it notifies you at a certain time, all that stuff. But when I'm when I'm walking with somebody, uh, especially before, I'd have my iPad open with notes and I I just have it on. So whenever somebody's speaking, it's it's typing it in. The only thing I would have to go back and do is find out who said what. So if there's three three people, then you know I might just go back and add just their first initial and then I'll go back and edit it one once we're done with our walk. Mm -hmm. And I can go back and see in real time like that whenever you're walking and somebody's like, Oh you need to change this, you need to do that, you need to do it. Sometimes it's hard. Mm -hmm. Your brain works more when you walk. Do the blood flow oh, thing. I can, yeah. yeah. So I uh, got it on notes, I can just boom 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 and I, I think that's where I'm old school is like because my dad I like how CJ is not accepting the solution. No. He's like, fuck that. I need an assistant next to me. Oh, well, I love that. I mean, that's just, <laughs> but that's just pretty expensive, you know? I mean, uh, <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm your free assistant. <laughs> well, you, you make a great assistant. Yeah, yeah. I do. I, I know. Free Plus, I can practice going all with you. Yeah, I'll um, let you win sometimes. No, but I guess that's where I'm, I'm old school is that. Oh, um, whatever. Like, my, my parents, they don't use, uh, my dad doesn't use his address book. Like if I want to save your number, yeah, he doesn't even do that. He's like, mom, what is he? He writes it down, or uh, he just tries to memorize it. Like, my my mom doesn't use apps. Neither one of them do. So, my thing is, I never ever talk to my phone. 
never use Siri or Alexa. I never talk. I, I guess because I've never built a habit of doing it. Yeah. So you know what broke me of that? At my parents' house, everything. With the radio? Everything. Oh, everything on it. Their lights, their TVs, their bedroom lights, their bedroom fans. Everything is on. Hey, hey, Alexa. Yeah, we use Alexa at my house too. Yeah. But we don't have everything like the lights and everything. Everything. Everything, everything. In, everything in, in their entire house is Alexa. You know, so, I keep deciding to fold that off, like the home automation stuff, because like a lot of times you have to buy into the whole system, and it's not really modular. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it's expensive. Yeah. But. A lot, like you have to like I tried the light bulbs. You tried the light bulbs. Yeah, they you don't do the switches. Actually, the light bulbs are on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, and they weren't bright. Very bright. Um, yeah. So they have um, they have a few of the light bulbs that are connected, um, and then they have the plugs. Um, the plugs are probably the, the cheapest thing that you can do that that's, oh, well, that's Wi-Fi that's connected to the to the to the Alexa. Um, and you can change the name, right? You don't have to be called Alexa. No, I, I call it computer. So I'm like John Luke. Oh, that's right. Computer. Play. Yeah. What do you want me to play? Music. <laughs> you know who else did that was uh, Lyles. To, Matt, to, to computer? Matt Lyles, yeah. yeah. Really? Computer, yeah, Dude, yeah. I think he and I are bros. Yeah. We just don't know yet. Yeah. I was talking to him the other day, and we were just vibing, you know, like, mm -hmm. are you my brother? Yeah. You might be. Yeah, <laughs> pretty awesome. much. That was funny, though. <laughs> one time, whenever uh, you were here, and then they got into a freaking car accident. Yeah. You know, and they had to show up, and then you kicked his ass, too. He comes from a yeah. good car accident and he wound up whooping his ass in Portland too. Man, you could win one. <laughs> Every once in a while I went. Actually, wait, the first show I was on, you beat me. Now that I think about it, that was your first victory. Yeah. But I mean, it you was were insane. fire with those buoys. Fire, dude. I remember. Uh, and he went back to Yeti's and I was like, dude, that is too slow for you. That's the thing about casinos, man. What's, like, what are you throwing these days? I've been. Sorry to interrupt you. What is my favorite bag right there? Which one? The fine? Yeah. This fucking yeah, he's the body, beautiful. Huh? Yeah, he's uh, been throwing the body. He's yeah, been throwing the body. No problem with the body. I love the body too, but I'm just saying, like, like when the conditions change to where it sucks, you just gotta have them back up. The way this feels, the way it looks, it's fucking gorgeous. But I feel like not being biased, like, because this is, of course, I'm biased right here, but I think the pink Minotaur. Yeah. yeah. You know? Minotaur's a good guy. But, but, but the, the, the Gen 1, now it's the 2.0. I don't like the 2.0. The feel changed. Not just the feel, but the feel of it in your hand. So, I've just come to see this. Feel, feel that, that dirty one that's up top, the one that's sacked high, and then feel the Gen 2, the 2.0. You could, it feels smaller. Grab that one and then put that other one in your hand. So I have two grips when I play now, which sucks. Yeah, I'm going through another bag back throw change again myself. First I tried the Great Note Church, then I tried the Luke Anderson, and now I'm, now I'm trying the same stuff. Well, it's a totally different feel. The, the, the feel is different. Obviously it has the, the underwear and it, the, the liner, but to me, in so my hand, is it it thin, thin, much, much bigger. Much bigger. This is the feel that's inside of that. What do you think is bigger? This one. Just it's pretty much bigger. the same. I don't know. It, it may be just the fill, the fill of the bag with the liner in it that's different. Like I threw these last night and I threw, I threw them really, really well whenever I switched up, what's up whenever I switched over to them. But he has a set of the, uh, the Gen 2s the, with the the, um, the liner in them that feels really similar to that. It just maybe has a thinner liner. Um, and, but then the 2.0s come out and um, I had a set and I just I didn't like the way they felt. Even, even in the hand. Well, so, it's different. What do you usually have? I, I like the way they felt um, the more they break in. So I've always been um, <coughs> I've always been into, into Yetis. I got away from Yetis as as all these new bag manufacturers came out. Um, I had, I was throwing not ponchos a little bit because they were really similar to the Yeti. 
Um, but right now, like in my bag, I have Yetis and a uh, set of Aries. I'm just a true bag boy, man. I, if I grab a bag, I will find a reason to like that bag. I'll find something that I like about it. I'm like an optimist when it comes to bags. Yeah. So when something's like extra fucking sexy, then I'm just fucking mind blown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me to hate a bag, you're just not even trying. Like it's just, like, it's just fucking not even. You're not even trying. For 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 uh, for Sig One, I was throwing Bonnie. So. Are you throwing Bonnie? Throwing Bonnie? With members, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, he told me. Fine. He told me finally. It's uh, nice. It's Eddie Vedder. The number here. Huh? You throw with Eddie Vedder? Eddie Vedder. <laughs> But yeah, we're we're probably gonna be throwing. I know we're gonna be throwing bodies. That's just his bag. That's what he likes to throw. Um, so he has like a, a dirty set that's really broken in. We're working on a set of nightshades right now to get them kind of like fifty percent. Cause I like my bag to feel. Well, no, it was a really nice flat bag. Now. I've seen them, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't like a real floppy bag. I like the bag to be fuller. Um, it can be like that minnow is is floppy, but it's full. So whenever I, whenever I actually grip the bag, um, it doesn't move with my hands. So this is this is my grip. These 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 two fingers kind of float off. It's only that. Two fingers? Yeah, it's, it's only this. That's fucking crazy. So if I wanna if I wanna throw, but is that what makes the bag flat? The two fingers instead of three? No, I mean, I've tried to, th I can throw with four fingers on and still throw a flat bag, it just, my hand comes out different. My hand is not like this when I throw. I don't know if you've noticed that. Mm -hmm. When I throw my bag, it's it's here to here. That's your release is like this? My release is just like this, yeah. Huh. So with, when, two, with two fingers? Yeah, so it's I'll, like this? I grip uh -huh. like this, so right now there's three fingers on me. Um, but whenever I come back and I throw, and then my cut is only like this. So it's crazy, dude. Um, I've tried, like, uh, like with, with Riley and Claver, um, last week. I was trying my, my hardest to, to throw his type of cut, where I mean he doesn't. He has the tilt in the bag, um, and it's just got a slight angle like this. And then when his bag hits, it cuts. Yeah. Right? He's got that flop cut. Yeah. Um, and for me, uh, my bag is is tilted down and kind of at this angle. So when it hits, it it, it cuts. It doesn't have that flop cut. Like, like you know, Sammy. I mean, you're pretty good at analyzing uh, shit because I never really look at, I feel like if I look at how my back flight's going, I, I'm. No, so I'll do that. So so at home when I'm throwing, I'll look at my back flight and I don't care where the bag Actually, is ending up because I want to oh, see. You're just what, worried about back flight. That's it. I'm. I was looking at my back flight because I. F I felt like for me, coming out with a flatter bag, for my air mills was more efficient, mm -hmm. right? Because if I caught this much of my bag in the hole, the chances that it stays on the board or around the hole or went in the hole was was greater than my bag coming in at this angle or coming in at, coming at this angle. The only thing is, is my release. I, I cannot put tilt in my bag and that it frustrates the hell out of me. But I've gotten a really pretty flat bag where I've gotten into my rock and, and swing motion where it's it's just straight down the middle. Like we threw, the other night I threw at the, um, the slow shootout qualifier and um, my partner uh, was Rob Price. He only throws the black sheep. So it's, the it's, black sheep are fucking good. And the Costellos. Nice. Do you have some? Yeah. yeah, I was saying ice because uh, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Oh, ice price, yeah, <coughs> ice, ice price, yeah. yeah, yeah. He he replied on the post that I made. It said ice price and the gentleman. Dude, he's he made, got, called me the gentleman. He's, he's got that fucking uh, squirrel mentality. Like he's like kind of, he's like always moving around and always talking and uh, you know. Talk oh man, I want you to paint my Zuka. Oh, of I've course. seen people have super cool ones. Oh, of course. I uh, I keep forgetting to ask you. I got a totally. I got well, an idea for like, so one. Like, did I ever pay you for the fucking merch I sold? The, this is a fucking print of a painting I did. This is a print of a painting, the one I did. So who? I just got on. this print. Uh, check that out. It's the Frida painting I did. Let me get some ice. Yeah, so, so I've, I've actually gotten 
a little bit of shit about how my he did this. Yeah, he he painted it, and then he had the the print done. It's not it's not the uh, typical CJ style. Look how cool it is. Oh, I like the, I like your coffee mug. It's got like a girl walking away with an umbrella. He did hands, man. A lot of artists are scared of hands. It's just so hard to, to make. Yeah, his paintings, he gets into, he gets into some, some sick detail. And you go yeah, that out. earring? Yeah. How big is this? Have you seen this in real, the real life? The painting itself, yeah. I have not. I've only seen the print, but... So I was telling him, whenever, whenever he was showing me this yesterday, I thought by looking at it that it was a, that it was a painting. I mean, look at it. Yeah, well, the one I have in my house. I was at the same thing. Like, these prints are... They're amazing, right? Yeah. And then... They must have some pretty relief to it, you know? And then they have this, um, this kind of yeah. the holographic um, or foil. Hey, did you freehand this, or did you use, some like, a person, like a... Profile, or is that just freehand out of your brain? Fuck no, I used a, I used a, uh, I don't side. know who it was. It's just a side profile. Of I was like, I know Taylor I need Stone. to get. It wasn't Taylor Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, man, it looks like Taylor Stone, man. Side profile, of Taylor Stone. Like, I think it was uh, Taylor's great great grandpa. Like it fucking looks like Taylor it Stone. It might also be my great great grandpa. Yeah, that's crazy. It looks just like him. No, but basically what I do is like here, put this back where you want. I looked for a. Uh, a picture on the internet of somebody who had a mohawk um, and the right angle and I was like okay that's the guy I need to I need to turn this guy into Taylor Stone <laughs> hey, look I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking that's cool that Taylor Stone's on all those uh, all those backs <laughs> he goes as soon as he as soon as Taylor saw this one yeah he goes Hey, you know that's me, right? <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? And then I looked at it, and I was yeah. like, oh my god, that is you. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, bro, that is you. And he's like, yeah, no. Got him. And, and I was like, dude, you know what you are? You're a Trojan horse. Basically, now Taylor Stone is in all the uh, Olympus bags. That's right. Boom. I love it. So, but, <laughs> that's why the other day when Taylor was... Swimming at top 60, I was like, oh, look at Aries fucking swimming in the water. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talk about top 60, how was it? Yeah, didn't go. Well, first of before I say that, like, how come you didn't go, man? Dude, we oh, needed you there. Um, Dude. I have all kinds of excuses. No, I know. I know you're a busy guy. Well, no, wait. The reason I didn't go to top 60 is because I didn't fucking make it. Okay? You, you didn't how did you make it? Are you somebody's guest? I, I was his bitch. Yeah? <laughs> I did get an invite. He, like, he got to invite a bitch, and he's like, all right, hey, you want to be my bitch? Close, close to close to the end, somebody did reach out. was like, hey, you want to be my guest? And I uh, I already I had already made plans. My little sister came to town and hung out for uh, that weekend. Uh-huh. So. Your little sister? Yeah. How old is she? Oh, shit. She's seven years younger than me. How many brothers and sisters you got? I got an older and a younger. Sisters. Oh. Um. And I'm what, 45? So that puts her at 38? Yeah, you're all young. Youngins. Yeah, she's a teacher down in Austin. <coughs> she's funny. She actually, well, listen, of course I love her. She's my sister, right? Uh, yeah. she, she'll come and hang out for a week or whatever. And uh, she was in town that week. And uh, so that's why, that was my, my final excuse was that. Yeah, of course. And, um, but my original excuse, the reason I didn't want to go, I don't want to go to that unless I earn it. I want to make top 60 and then I'll go. Um, I didn't earn it. So, um, she I think even, automatically top 60 or events like that, bag manufacturers should have a, you guys can come. You know, oh yeah, bag guys can come. Cause, cause that's the type of, everybody's relaxed, chilling, you know, people that are, uh, been taking the game seriously all the time. Now it's time to relax. Hey, oh, the guy who makes my favorite bag is here. Let me just fucking pick his brain. Yeah. Shoot the shit with him. I should have yeah. probably gone. I, I was surprised to hear that, you know, Taylor was there? Yeah. Like the, the, the bag brokers weren't there? No. Mm, no. Um, I think Taylor was the only guy. Taylor was the only guy. Well, Grant was there, right? Yeah, Grant was there. Yeah. Grant counts as a bag banker. He counts. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then, uh, but that's it. Those two. Mm-hmm. But you know what I noticed about Top 60 is that it's true that 
It really is, especially with the with the top guys. It's really just they're just there to hang out. They don't give a shit, right? No, they're just having a great time. Yeah. You know, and really, I mean, it's hard to take it seriously because it's fucking hot. Dude, just, that's the other reason. Like, it's I don't want to so be, out, be outdoors. That's it. This and is then, record heat, dude. Yeah, and then the and then the boards, they're all uneven. Uh, just, I mean, because yeah. you're out there in this uneven grass. Did you play at night? My first, my one experience at top sixty, I was trying to compete at the night. random draw was at night. Yeah, yeah. Draw was and it was impossible. The first time. The lighting was bad. No, the lighting was actually really good. Was it? Yeah. yeah. They had that yeah. big, the big uh, uh, generator light. It was. It, it put okay. out some. It put out some light. Well, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like personally, me, I have bad yeah. vision anyway, and I'll I'll latch on to any excuse to lose a game. Dude. And the the lighting for me at night out there was just. I fucked myself hard to see it. So so the the overall experience, you know, we got there pretty early on on uh, Friday, and um, and. You know they had they had some some uh, non cornhole related stuff hooked up. We were actually That's good. We we're actually unloading it, setting up in unloading the car. We were well, we were getting our zookas out just for something to sit on. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, Chad's like, what the fuck do you have your cornhole gear out for? We're like, dude, he's getting out this, you know. Yeah. So, well, he's like, what do you bring bags for? Yeah, what do you what do you got your zookas out for? Yeah. And that type of stuff. So. Um, and yeah, it's, not, it's not about competition. It's, it's not, not about hanging out. It's not about competition. It's about hanging making out. friends. So we, I, I think they worded it really well. It was something about like a weekend of camaraderie and friendship, yeah. or something like that. And I, I think that's pretty cool. Well, one of the one of the biggest things uh, that I really enjoy about Cornwall, I've said it a couple times on on the hey, podcast. You and I beat Grand Up Church and Chad Jacobson. Mm-hmm. And, at, what do you call it at uh Let's fucking go. No, no at uh, what do you call it? Oh, it was I thought like, I said cornhole. It was beer pong, <laughs> but it was with uh, buckets and a basketball. Big buckets, some uh, water, yeah. and a basketball. Yeah. And they were just dominating people. And, and we then stepped up. And they were like, who else wants to play? And we're like, we never played before. And like, yeah, yeah, come on, my teacher asked you too. And then we just fucking beginner's luck. <laughs> Kill <laughs> them. That's it's great. fucking awesome, dude. Hey, I, well, I can say it. we beat Grand Up Church at something. At something. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's mad about it too. He doesn't. Oh, oh he was pissed. He was yeah. pissed. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> they wanted up right away to to redeem. Rematch. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. They never got a chance though. No. no but continue your story. What you, what uh, well, I was saying, you know, with 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 cornhole, the the coolest thing is is that there's such a vast uh, um, spectrum of of people. Yeah. Right. right there, there's from every background. Is there? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. There's millionaires with people that that don't have jobs. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That that right. that support themselves by playing cornhole. Mm-hmm. Some do, and um, and uh, I think it's that's probably one of the coolest things. I, I've I've been into bowling in the past, competitive bowling, and those types of people come from a lot of the same backgrounds. I've been to uh, I, I played golf. Uh, competitively through college and and a little after college and a lot of those people are from the same background. He teaches the most part. golf too sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah, like swing basic shit. Yeah, they used to be my my big passion before I hurt my back. And so you were teaching too? I wasn't teaching. No. No, but you just got into it. Yeah. High school team. Uh, no. Got serious in my twenty thirties, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can say I'm a single digit. I got down to like mid singles. It was hard to do in golf, dude. Oh yeah. It once you know, for me, like I was always a good ball striker. My grandpa was a huge golfer. Yeah. And um, like he shot his age from I think sixty two on, like really good golfer. That's cool. A Navy guy, um, had kind of a Moe Norman swing. He was a pilot, wasn't he? He was a Navy uh, captain of the Navy pilot. He won the what uh, earned the Distinguished Flying Cross, which is the highest award across all uh, armed forces for uh, aviation. I uh, did it, and the story is really cool. Um, brief summary is uh, he's heading back with his buddies flying cap. This is during the Battle of Light Gulf, which is the largest naval engagement of all time. Um, and they're flying back to their carrier, and they, they see some vows, which are uh, Japanese like bombers. It's a two man plane. Japanese is it's a two man plane, it, it's a ship hunter. And uh, they're almost out of gas, but they see this little crew of vows. Uh, you know, in the area, and they decided to attack, which was risky because um, they might not have 
you know, when you engage, like you might not have enough gas to make it back to the carrier. Mm -hmm. And like, as a pilot myself, right? <laughs> Landing on a fucking carrier is nuts. Like, uh, I mean. Is it a football field? Dude, it's small as fuck is what it is. And it's, it's <laughs> moving with the ocean. And, and it's and, moving. And the carriers try to go into the wind when, you, when they accept the planes back. Like, the, but it doesn't always happen. So just to put that, and we're talking. Like, That's why they got that wire to catch, right? They got, well, well, they also will put a, a big net in the front. Yep. So you got your tail hook has to catch, and if that doesn't, you know they'll, they'll have some some nets. But you also have to trust that your tail hooks down. Um, well, anyway, they're headed back. They see these guys. They engage. They shoot down a bunch of them, and make it back. <clears throat> I think I think my lost a guy, um, but he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. So you've seen guys where like you know, we, whenever he wore his navy whites. And had all his medals on the distinguished flying cross is like right there it's like front and center wow uh, but he was a captain in the navy he uh um ran the island of guam for a bit kind of my hero growing up oh, yeah it was in royce my first yeah. son is royce your inspiration of freaking flying too right yeah you know and when i was your favorite pilot my favorite aviator is uh, royce allen singleton mm -hmm. uh, he grew up in southern oklahoma and uh I, my first Cross country trip on my plane by myself was to his hometown, uh, Duncan, Duncan, nice. Oklahoma, Halliburton Field. Did uh, you make a video right. on that? I did. Yeah. Yeah. My, it was my first cross country solo. It's actually my uh, most popular, most So were you more nervous or excited? Or both, kind of? So I made a mistake in that flight. Um, terrified. <laughs> Not terrified, but like, yeah, I dealt with it and I worked through it, but. Um, so you were terrified of it? At one point, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, first time I'm, I'm going cross country without anybody right seat, me and my plane by myself. Um, and I, I'm going to Duncan, uh, Oklahoma. And I actually edited, I edited all of this out of the video on YouTube. But there's this, I've got it on film, uh, where I fuck up pretty bad. And, you know, it's a tip for pilots, you know, always know your, uh, your uh, preferred heading. Which is it's just a number like on a compass. Mine was uh, you know, three ten would have been fine. Anything north. Anyway, so I take off in, in Grand Prairie. And you have to understand that DFW is one of the busiest airspaces in the world on the planet. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a very busy. It's the airspace. middle of America. Yeah, and you've got not only DFW, you've got Love, you've got Alliance, and it's just jam packed. Mm -hmm. So it's completely restricted airspace all the way down to the ground just north of Grand Prairie. So I in Grand Prairie, you have to stay below at least 2,500 feet uh, sea level, uh, which is about yeah, 1,500 above ground. So anyway, I take off, I tell this guy, I'm going straight north, and uh, he's like, what's your on-course heading? And I didn't know. That was mistake number one. I did not know my on-course heading, which was fucking mm -hmm. dumb. You know, I knew the plane was good, I did my pre-flight, I took off great, everything was awesome. What's your pre what's your on-course heading? And I didn't know. What'd you say? I told him I didn't know. I'm working oh, on it. Oh, you just told him? I told him. So I bet you were like, hey, I'm a rookie, I don't know. I didn't say I'm a rookie, but I was like, uh, I'm working on it, right? But he's just, you know, probably rolling his eyes like this idiot. Yeah. Um, he's pretty So rookie. I'm over fucking Cowboy Stadium uh, and the, all that stuff in Arlington, right? So I'm north of my airport. And there's a wall there that you can't go into unless you have clearance into the Bravo. And that's happening. Don't have my own course heading. I'm also trying to use autopilot to keep my, to fly my plane while I kind of work the problem to figure out what my own course heading is. And um, so when you take off, you're going full power. But then you back the power out, right? And um, you're climbing, you're climbing, you're climbing, and then you back the power out to like sink a little bit. And that's what I did, I backed the power out. And uh, I'm trying to work that problem, and then my auto, I hear my autopilot trim in motion, which means the autopilot is moving my trim, which is terrible because the autopilot will crash your plane. It will stall your airplane out, and you will fall under the ground. What's uh, trim mean? Trim, so like you've got what's called pressure on the yoke. So like when you're pulling and pushing, you're making your airplane fly, right? And, Up, down. Yeah, trim. and I've got uh, rudder trim and um, elevator trim in my plane, and my plane was uh, it was sinking. Right, and the autopilot's trying to keep it level. So to do that, it uses trim. So it's trying to keep the airplane level. But the, the fact of the matter is, I didn't have enough power 
uh, in this situation to keep my airplane level. It didn't have enough. So when I heard that, I was like, oh shit, you know, trim in motion. That means, I know what that means, like I'm in trouble. And then the fucking ATC guy trouble. is like, hey, November 314 Sierra Alpha, what's your on-course heading? Yeah. And I, 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 and then I, my rational brain finally kicked in and was like, just give them something fucking north. Like, I'm going north. And I threw out some random ass north number. And then he uh, cleared me through the Bravo. There's north numbers? Yeah, north is like anything left of 360, or 360 is north, a zero is oh, north, okay, okay, okay. 10 is north. Gotcha. Uh, you know, it's north. I think I threw out some high, mm -hmm. something above 280 or 70. Cool. And um, <clears throat> he, so he cleared me into the Bravo. I corrected everything, got it all sorted. But there was a moment there for like, I don't know, 10, 30 seconds where uh, I was not ahead of my aircraft, right? So you're always supposed to be, like you're, you're flying and you're ahead of, they call it ahead of your plane. But I got behind it. Like my plane was doing shit that I didn't necessarily tell it to do. That's yeah. a bad situation. And I'm only like a thousand feet over fucking the Jerry's world. Right, so that was a bad situation. That's probably you, were the, you were in front of the horse instead of being on the horse. I mean, you could yeah. have overcorrected and really messed up and done. Could have been bad. Yeah. Could have been bad. But anyway, I you know, handled it, dealt with it, uh, got it off. Didn't put that on my uh, vid my YouTube video. On my YouTube video, I'm smooth. It's all hey, fine. Hey, the party ended after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. like, oh my God. so you have the actual footage somewhere though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think I have a... I've, I've got a, a video that I've worked on where it's all my mistakes. It's good. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I really want to yeah, share. Well, that's where people actually fucking learn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's what cool. I want to share with people because it's like, mm -hmm. if you're going to fly near Bravo airspace, you've got to know you're on force heading. And uh, I've heard it while, while I've been flying. Um, people take off. They don't know what their on force heading is. And ATC wants to know because they got to direct you through the busy airspace. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's... I digress. Not so, so when you say when they say, "Hey, what's your on-course setting?" You can't just be like, "I'm going to Midland." No, no, no. You gotta give them your on. You gotta always know your on-course. Like setting. even though he knows that's west, you, you can't, can say west. You can't. You rather just say something generic like west instead of saying, "Yeah, I'm going to Odessa Midland." Yeah. I'm going to Abilene. Yeah, they don't. They're not gonna do the work for you. You know. Oh, okay, okay. They're they're punching in numbers. Yeah. Because it's, it's a big old math equation. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. The mistake I made was, it's actually on my uh, pre-takeoff checklist now. Uh, just make sure you've got your destination punched into your nav system, and then they'll tell you. It gives you a number. So now whenever they say, what's your on-course setting, I've always got it. Nice. Like after that lesson I learned, I always know what my on-course setting is. Nice. But that was me when I only had like 30 or 40 hours of flight time, mm -hmm. and now I'm approaching like 300 or something. Yeah. So it's... And even even right now, there's still a lot of shit you don't know Tons. that you're gonna learn. Oh, dude. Oh yeah. I've had moments, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was landing course. in uh on the way back from well, how about, oh, this year is a good one. So Brian uh, Renfrey, he's mm -hmm. a Cornell guy. Oh yeah. Tall blonde guy. Yeah. Um, he lives in uh, Brian Estates, Brian Hill, what is it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, right by. He had a place in Colorado. And he was like, hey, does your plane make it to Colorado? And I'm like, yeah. So I flew my plane there. Best adventure ever. Aviation adventure ever. Beautiful scenes of so it. So awesome. Dude, the landing at uh, Telluride. Wait, is it Telluride? Yeah, it was Telluride. KTEX. Yeah, Telluride. Dude, that airport, I will fly there any day, yeah. any point, any time. But what happens is the air is so thin. I land in my plane. It, so I had to fly over the Rockies. Hold, so my plane's not really built for a high altitude doesn't have oxygen, doesn't have a turbocharger, it's not a high altitude plane. Um, but I, you can manage it, you can do it. And that's what I did, but when I landed my plane and taxi, it, my engine quit because I didn't uh, adjust the mixture after I landed to deal with the thin air. Wow. So my engine just stalled out. I came off the, uh, the runway and my engine just stalled out. Wow. So I'm the guy like, restarting the engine. And then, <laughs> um, like two or three days later when I'm leaving, same shit. I didn't have it adjusted properly. So, uh, dude, leaving Telluride that day was crazy. I was trying to wait for the wind to die. Didn't, it got worse actually. But as I'm waiting, there's other pilots doing the same thing. And one dude was like some old guy. And he's like, cause he had a high performance uh, turbine airplane. And uh, he had a wife and a dog. And so he had, a, he had more concerns than me. And he was like, oh, psh, you a dog skyline out there? Yeah, you take a dog up in a plane? Yeah. 
Whatever you want. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you take your canary if you want? What the? Fuck? Yeah. Wow. Okay. But he was funny. He was like, "Yeah, you're." And he's like, "Oh, your skyline? You're fine. Just go, you can just go right now. Just take off middle of the field. I wouldn't even taxi the end of the runway. Just go right there. Like basically cut the runway in half. Mm -hmm. What you're never supposed to do." And he uh, he's giving me all these tips or whatever, and I'm like, "Okay, cool. Well, I'm still gonna wait for you to go first. I'm gonna follow you out of here." And uh, I'm sitting doing my run up, <clears throat> having some issues because it's new to me. This high altitude stuff working through those issues, and um, he's taken off, and he radios to me specifically, he's like, hey, Cessna guy, or something like that, it's pretty squirrely when you when you take off, like, telling me, like, it's it's, it's gonna be tough. Wow. Yeah, it was, which is not what I wanted to hear while I'm, like, right, right. working things out, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it actually turned out to be pretty, that, that trip was awesome. That, that airport, if you ever get a chance to fly into so that airport. Colorado Springs? No, to tell you Yeah, it's it is. called KSX. Quiet. Every it's time I got caught, I was fucking drove it. So, so we used to, f I used, I used to travel a lot for work, and uh, I flew into Durango, and it's That's a, just south. It's a cow pasture. Yeah. Yeah, it's just south of. Yeah. Of that was my. So it's a, it's, it's, it's uh, we're flying in. I'm on American Airlines, flying in, and I look down and I'm like, cows, runway, yeah, cows. <laughs> okay, uh, there's. There's a, a couple dogs, I guess, that tend them. They keep them off the runway, which is I am looking for a donkey and two sheep, if anybody knows. Which is, which is pretty cool. But uh, so I fly in, and we board the plane right there on the runway. The first time I've ever done that. They give you your bag. Like, it's, it's right there. Nice. So the baggage was, claim? No, no baggage claim. And then, uh, so I'm flying out three days later, and it's, it's like a... 7 a.m. flight, something like that. This, the guy checks me in. All right, he's running all three discs, uh, American Delta. And One guy is running three different companies? I, I get there in just a second. What the fuck? All right, so dude checks me in. Okay. okay. And then we have to go and wait in line for TSA. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm still pretty full. So we have, we have to wait in line for TSA. It, it takes a little while. We're like, I'm like, jeez. And so... This guy goes back and comes back out. He has a different shirt on. <laughs> no, 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 I swear to God. No, I swear. He's like, oh, I'm TSA. Guy. Yeah. So now he's TSA, and he's like, "Don't worry, you're not gonna be late. I got you." <laughs> no, dude. That's so. Yeah, yeah. We go just, through. He's we a go funny through, guy. We go, we go through TSA. Okay. And then we're. I'm sitting there, and there's a little bitty bar inside, like the makeshift little tent he's that they have as their. No, he wasn't the bartender. There was a girl as a bartender. But I'm wow. sitting there and I'm 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 I called either, you know, my girlfriend or my mom, somebody I'm like, this something crazy just happened. Like this guy just checked me in, American Airlines, took yeah. my bag, and then I'm waiting in line and he's TSA too. Yeah. Alright, so I'm sitting there on the phone and it's like a uh, like a little makeshift tent with one door out and uh, it's like these glass windows all the way across. You can see the plane out there. And I look out, dude's wearing yellow vest. Stop it. Dude. He's out there loading bags. Dude, I thought so my guy was fucking. This is crazy. Durango? So, this is Durango, Colorado. I believe so. It. All right. Dude. But early morning. I'm a man like, of many hats. That guy. Like like early morning, 7 a.m. ish. Yeah. All right. And then uh, um, go outside, board the plane, I'm in all. Like texting, like, Jesus, this guy's like three jobs. Yeah. Man, he must make great money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, get on the plane. Everything is good to go, and then look was out the, the plane. Look, too? no, uh, that, that would be crazy. Seven but look, look out the window and <laughs> I love it, dude. And I'm like, so then every time I flew back into Durango because uh, when my son got got uh, sick, then we would I you know fly back and forth from there or visit my kids or or have to go out. Um, I was working in Farmington, New Mexico, which is just south of Durango. I'd just drive up to Durango and fly out from there. And uh, every time I went, I was I had to talk to this guy. Like, of course, like that's a fucking legend. Yeah, yeah. I will never forget that story. It's the best story. But the first time I flew in, just seeing cows in the pasture right next to the yeah. run, you know what this single is? runway. No, it's a green laser. Oh, I need to put batteries in it though. Hey, remind me to get batteries. <laughs> my laser. Right. Hey Siri. <laughs> What's up, you gotta do? It? Hey Siri, make a note. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, Siri's at lunch. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, no. oh, sorry. Dude, would this really affect you if you're up there and also you see a green laser? It's illegal. Well, I mean, like if you experienced a laser coming into your cabin, does that freak you out? I mean, the, I've never experienced it, but the issue is that um, there's a eye acclimation, right? So like at night, you're supposed to wait like 10 minutes or something like that before you um, start flying your plane when it's, when it's dark. And your instruments are all dimmed out and it gets dark. So you have to, your eyes have to get acclimated. And that fucks it up, right? Mm. Um, but also, yeah, you know, like bright so, lights in your eyes. Somehow they figure it out where that thing's coming from. They arrest your ass. It's pretty yeah, easy. It's illegal. Yeah. You can triangulate their position pretty fast. Dude, my, my daughter's fucking ear pods got stolen at her, at her fucking school, which is about, what, where's George Bush from here? What, five miles? Yeah, sure. But yeah. Just turned on the app and found them? And she found them. They're at this fucking elementary school down the street. Dang. Somebody stole them from over there and gave them to the little fucking brother or sister, and now they're over here at this fucking elementary school. So now we're just waiting to find out where they fucking live. That way we tell the cops, hey, can you go check it out? Well, you know? It's fucking crazy. That is crazy. Hey, but what I was going to tell you is that about the Top 60 thing is Chad? Chad. He is a fucking gracious host. Like, (laughs) seriously, like, this motherfucker, he, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how he does it. He's like a, I mean, he just, he knows how to entertain people, yeah. and this motherfucker is just writing, doing this boat thing, mm-hmm. just like, oh, whoever, and it, whoever, we come back, it. and then other people are like, oh, man, I want to get on the boat, too, and like, let's okay, go. let's go. Let's go. Dude, he's just out there, and then he's got to go, I don't know how much he had to fucking put in gas. Yeah, about 250 each time he filled up. Yeah, and so, you know. Hey, that's, that's the first time we went, too, about that, we stopped at gas station, he's like, Anybody want ice cream? He went and bought everybody ice cream. Everybody from that. See, that's what the thing is. Like, some people, I heard some people complaining. And you're always going to have Karen's. Complaining about what? That's the thing. That's my point. You're always going to have Karen's. Did you see the T.O. Karen thing? The video? T.O. That's another story. Okay. So, you're always going to have complainers. All right? Always. Always. I don't give a fuck if you're Jesus. And Jesus yeah, had he, he had complainers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually nailed to a cross. Yeah. So, basically... There were some there were some rumbles about dude we paid this much and we're not getting our money's worth in food you know like that was a lot of that actually wait you had to pay to go to top 60. Well, your, room, was, your room cost and and your no. alcohol cost and stuff like that room yeah. cost no it was more like i thought it was free it was food and you didn't have to pay for food because i paid for my what oh, the, the 35 dollars it's 35 bucks for, for the food it's 35 dollars per person i paid 35 bucks but what i i thought it was just to enter enter the fucking tournament yeah because yeah. i'm just i'm his bitch i'm his fucking uh yeah plus one so whatever but 35 bucks is what i spent okay okay yeah. <laughs> got and some ice cream a boat ride played some cornhole i got an unlimited amount of dos Equis to drink <laughs> yeah oh i, I got so much dos Equis. i got fucking fajita meat which i fucking cut myself I got barbecue. Wait, you had to cut it yourself. You didn't complain. I volunteered. I fucking did, and that's actually what fucked up my arm for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> bar- bar- barbecue. The barbecue was on yeah. point. Yeah, I had a fucking personal boat driver yep. drive me and my wife around <laughs> for hours. The fucking Possum Kingdom Lake for hours. Fucking doing the the, the ski thing. Tubing. Yeah. Tubing and, and then I had board. my personal boat driver. Um, <laughs> Fill up the gas tank again. Oh, that sounds like more of like a 3450 experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a shit. You didn't get any change. So no, there's a lot of shit that I didn't have to pay for. So so here's and the, all I paid was 35 bucks. So here's the thing, like all those complainers, right? Um, first off, uh, uh, if you look at who registered versus the amount of people that showed up, didn't didn't even equate. So like how bad? Less people uh, showed up. Than no, a lot up. more people. There was a lot of people there. Right, there was quite a few people there. Yeah. So the amount of food that they prepared for was uh, paid. Yeah. Right. So at one point, uh, Jason graciously, Jason said, "We're out of food. Yeah. I'm gonna leave and go and buy pizza." Uh, Dude, I. What a you guy. see those bags right there? I mean, I mean, but right here. Yeah. I cut fajita meat that fucking big. Like there was that many piles of fajita. Like you know how it comes long. Yeah. 
I was cutting them on to little bitty pieces. Nice. Because I'm fucking crazy. But it went like this. I help it out. And then the next day, dude, I was fucking sore. (laughs) When we come home, he's like, man, my arm hurts from this, this, and this. Like, maybe maybe it was this, maybe it was this, and a couple days later. Shaking bags the next day, I couldn't even get on the board. So, look, people complain about that stuff, right? They were complaining about the pizza. That's what we were saying. The 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 people that complained about it, right? Something that you don't like. Rising star complaint. Are you oh, friendly? Right. Are you are you friends with these people, or are you just like in your mind you're like that guy's a dick? I don't want to be friends with. Him. You know what? I think it was it was a, a, it was a few of it wasn't like the people that have been involved in in that experience before. I don't think um, it was more of the. There was a rising star that complained that said left. that said, "Oh, I'm not." He was in the middle of a game, from what I understand. Yeah, and he said. We're not getting any because you know the top sixty. They got walk up and get a plaque and yeah, get bags, yeah, yeah. and he was like, "We're not getting anything. We're not getting a bag or nothing." And they're like, "No." Mm-hmm. So he fucking Back stopped playing, packed the shit up, and left. Oh, dude, you know that now I'm thinking about it. It was me and when um, I I went in one time, <clears throat> I was a rising star, and I played with. Oh my god, what is so I've been drinking, so I can't remember his name. Uh, twins that play in North Texas. Uh, oh, Holly. Oh, the Hollies. Yeah. yeah, the good yeah. one, Blake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which sucks, by the way. His brother gets like bumped and gets treated like he's good because his brother's so good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dude, Blake, Blake won uh, singles. He Blake's won good, dude. And doubles. Blake's good. Doubles. Oh, and doubles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he and I got teamed up yeah. for uh, Rising Star like a year or two ago, mm-hmm. and we won one and all. And he, of course, carried, carried me, although I did do some work in the finals. Mm-hmm. But um, when it was all over, I was like, wait, we didn't get anything? Like, we won, we didn't get anything? Well, they, <laughs> like, they, so I, I had the yeah, same Yeah, but you complaint. didn't make a big fucking deal. I didn't though. stop playing in the middle of the no, game. No, sure. no, no. I want to keep going real quick. Yeah. Blake actually uh, found me like a year and a half later. He's like, yeah, I got something for you. Like, what? And it was uh, two bags. From that uh, top sixty, like oh, that era, that's nice. and a picture of us uh, with the you know we won. That's so it's awesome. on my trophy shelf. So I've got that's, that's so I've cool. got one tro- one plaque, which was a uh, competitive singles tier one. Back when they used to say uh, like you had competitive singles and then tier one, tier two. Now it's tier one, tier two, right? Mm-hmm. So it's basically today's terms would be tier two competitive singles. I got a plaque first place. Beat my partner Pensacolovic. And it was at the uh, SIG that Taylor Stone launched uh, his company. Really? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, it was that one that was down in, uh, like, a and Yeah, probably the college station. Yeah. I keep forgetting how, how long you've been in TCO. Well, yeah. So I've got that. That's on my trophy shelf. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's it. I have no other piece of hardware. Except for the two bags that uh, Blake, Arthur, Holly gave me. So y'all made y'all's own. Own trophy, yeah. 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 That was that was really cool with him. I like that guy a lot. He's a good dude. Dude, he's so fucking cool. Yeah. And they, and they, and and they, they call him Cornwall the, player too, man. And Brent's the uh, the hot. They don't. They call him Hollywood for a reason. He's Mister. Hey, I'm I'm a. I'm gonna do what the fuck I want. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and Blake's like, hey, I'm I'm a Family Guy. I can't I can't do that anymore, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Blake's like the angel, and like Brent's like the fucking little devil here on this side. Like, Oh, I guess Blake wins yeah. more Cornell games, so. Yeah. I think well, Blake's an A player. player. He's an A player. Right? Is he they, A now? He should be. He's got to be. They both are, I believe, <laughs> don't you think? Dude, him and Sammy player. got paired up in uh, in doubles. Who's going to beat those two guys? Yeah, they won doubles. Just annihilated everybody. It's, all right, so we should probably talk some Cornell, right? we got the new season coming. Yeah. Um, Sammy, I think he posted his partners. It's just an absolute lineup. Did you see yeah. it? So, I saw it, but I forgot it. I, I forgot it too. I do want to talk about the the whole lineup thing. Well, let's talk yeah. about this. Have you booked all of your partners? No, that's what I wanted to talk about. I got my say one partner. That's it. it? it so I got my say one, two, and three myself. It is the absolute toughest thing because. So I get a partner. Yes, for me, because I, I feel like. Um, well, you're still right now. Your name out there, yeah, I'm, right now I'm not taken seriously, and I want to, I want to compete, but I feel like I get so much better when I play against somebody that's better than 
I, I started to play better when we went to open. When we started to play open, yeah. my bag got flatter. I started to think a lot more about strategy over getting my bag in the hole every time. Yeah, because you got your ass kicked. Yeah, well, not that. But, uh, playing against not yet. Playing against the Monarchas and the Chase Lesters and Z and Zach Faulkner and those players that they knew when they walked up to the Zach's board. Zach's an A player. I know when they walked up to the they board, they be. knew that they that they were gonna beat you, right? So they they did they took the game seriously. No, they never the fucking no. Uh, they do. Fuck they did too. When they walked up against me, I felt like they had confidence that they were gonna beat me. But also when I played Herrera, when I played Monarca, when I played Chase Lester, I'll never forget. Even when I played Matt Morris, he's still new to the game, but he's he's better than I am. Mm -hmm. They were teaching. They were they were taking moments to teach while we were actually playing in the game at, at a city, and it was really cool to me. That is perfect. Yeah. The, the winner.
got three back, so it's a loss. We got to go back. We've already found that. What is it? So Board and back, or did you go single? It's a. Uh, we're just gonna go down. No. Down first, and back. First, no, first blood. Like first if blood. you beat me right here, it's over. Yeah, yeah. So that's we're gonna go down. So. Yeah. All right. So three and three. Six. Yeah. Oh, you should have blocked behind all the one. Who got seven? Who got six? Uh, yeah. it was one your way. Yeah. All right. It's okay.
helped me on the math earlier, so. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have one off. I might. I might not. Are there any side outs allowed? Uh, sure.
So this is an elimination match? What was the score down there, guys? 2 0. So CJ's got a plus 2. What happens now? So 
Score there. That's a 2D. Zero in the hole. I know. It's three to He's two. He's showing one. He's three to two right now. Yeah. I got 
gonna hit the push. Actually, yeah, cause he, he's got me by he's got me by three, so I got I gotta beat him by four. So I need two wins. So now you have to. Okay, what comes after quadruple? You have three. He, I have four losses. He's got four losses. Okay, so he's got zero losses. Yeah, so I gotta he's got to win five times. Okay. Here we go. That was John's first loss of the whole day. John already had dinner and he, he's I've, just I've finally. Dinner, oh, look, he hasn't even had dinner and he, he finally lost. <laughs> you just got to win four more times, bro. That's all. Dude, nobody wants it? Is that one zero? Yeah. Oh, I got it. Nobody wanted it.
game three. Nice. <laughs> That's true, that is. Hey, last time you talked to the camera, you shanked it. Quit talking to the camera. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's good up, church. Good bag. Another good bag. Two. Good bag. Up church would be proud. I think you'd want it a little bit That was interesting. Alright, so do I have one on? Uh, no. So it's four or five right now? Yeah. You got two on the way up here, so I gotta get three, right? Yeah. I gotta make, I gotta make both bets. Was that three? three? You son of a... Jesus. Hey, but he's making it harder for you every single time. It's like an arcade game. It gets harder. You're about to get to difficult level. You better watch out. What's we'll score on that? Uh, that's an 
Jesus Christ, bro. It's all for all the marbles. All the marbles right here. Is this, this like turned out to be like that ACL fucking match with fucking Mark Richards. Yeah. Winner take all right here. Good blocker. Come on, John, you can do it. Nice. Hey, but you are partners for Sig 4, right? Sig 4. Sig 4, Sig four partners Sig right four. here. Dang, are you sure? Nice. Yeah. You sure? Because <laughs> I was showing you that I could. That's my dog right there. Cow. Yeah. Let's go check out some sexy bags. This one. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. So John, John Macy used to check check out the girl on this one. Yeah, I see a whole movie there. Look at that. That's it's pretty cool, huh? That's beautiful. This is my that. favorite one right here. Look at this in the background. Subtle heart. Right there. What? It's got a heart? Yeah, you see it? Yeah. It's oh, got a real subtle oh, heart right there. And then check out the front, guys. That's my favorite. This is my favorite one right It here. says Bonnie all the way around it in graffiti art. Mm -hmm. He did that by hand, too. Yes, sir. So he made two Bonnies. These are the two Bonnies. Right there. And then he made four buoys. Green carpet, blue carpet, orange carpet. What I don't get about herringbone is why don't they make a... How come they don't make a red herringbone carpet? Uh, That's some bullshit. Mom's the word. Mom's yeah. the word. So in the comments, guys, let us know <laughs> which color you like in the comments. Yeah, I would like that. Sure. Feedback. Which, so the buoys always sell it first the, and then the bonnies. So, so this combo here is definitely my favorite, the blue on blue. Has, a, has that pop right there. That's definitely my favorite there. I agree. Yeah. 
That is my favorite buoy as well. This is my favorite Bonnie. Dude, look at that. Oh God. But I mean, you can't knock the orange. No. The orange. Mm. It's definitely a. Uh, hey, well, give me the alls. Uh, give me y'all's a uh, little podium thing, both y'all. Uh, no, no, you guys, both y'all guys, give a number one. We'll do. Uh, here you go. We'll do the new one. bags. No, let's do. Really? Do you want to show the sexy bags, bro? There we go. Wait, no, 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 no. I, I object. We'll do one with both. No. I can't hold on the bag. I need to go. Same with you. Leave me with those fucking Aries bags. <laughs> here you go. Oh, that's what pissed him off even worse is the Nip, fucking Nip's Aries bags. Like Nip's going to say something. Yep. First comment, Lynn Nip. Later, go, Judson! <laughs> You know what, though? They Wait, are. hold on a second, guys. I'm going to protest this match. Just like an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Hey, you guys no, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. That's right. All right. Look at that. One, two, and three. Love it. Love it. Wait, wait, wait.